Um, yeah, this is just uh, kind of a quick overview of um, the geology and trying to answer questions that I'm commonly asked uh, about the geology around here and the questions that you might encounter. This picture of the, the concept, but one thing, if you look at these pictures, uh, what do you notice about the topography? Terrace, right. Terrace, notice that the tops, the highs are all flat, and you see these various lines here. These are steeper areas, so you have kind of this scalloped terrace topography, right? In the Flint Hills area, the rock layers are pretty horizontal, they're pretty flat line, right? And there's basically two main types of rocks. There's carbonates, primarily limestones, which represented deposits under ocean conditions, marine conditions. And then in between those limestones are these colorful mud, mud rocks and siltstones, kind of reddish, greenish, yellowish, yellowish gray. Um, and you don't usually see those because they erode more quickly. Um, they develop soils more quickly. So they're going to be pretty much vegetated over. Where you see those is in you know, fresh erosion, sort of like on the, the cuts of streams, where you have some fresh exposure, or on road cuts and things, where you see what those rocks are in between the hard resistant layers. But what happens is each one of these raised areas, each one of these terraces, represents a limestone bed. <coughs> Okay. In between is where those mud rocks are. So by just looking at the topography, you get a sense of what the geology is. The basic geology of Flint Hills is this alternation between uh, more resistant limestones and then these colorful mud rocks in between. This is from 177. Um, and just about halfway between um, the viaduct and, and uh, I-70. Uh, this happens to be down here is something called the uh, Blue Rapids Shale. This is the Spicer. Um, and this is the Funston. This is, um, and down below here would be the Krauss limestone, if you want to find where you are in those diagrams. But the point is, this is the typical pattern. Regardless of where you are in the Flint Hills geologically, it'll look like this. It's, this repetitive, it's a very, very repetitive um, pattern. So you have these softer mud rocks and siltstones, limestones, mud rocks, limestones. And these are what are forming those little ledges and platforms in the Flint Hills. Okay, so that's the first basic understand just the overall structure of the Flint Hills. The thickest limestone layer in Flint Hills is the Florence. Uh, and that's what you get uh, right at the intersection of I-70 um, and 177 right there at the interchange is that big whopping thick limestone. That's the Florence. The Florence is also the limestone that caps the highest elevation areas within the Kanza. Okay, so if you go down to the south end of Kanza, kind of the, the south uh, east corner of Kanza, that's the Florence. Okay, that's the highest, yeah. So looking at this picture, is all of that Florence? The that's whole thing? all Florence. Oh, okay. It's very thick. Okay. It's, it's, it's you know, several times thicker than any other limestone in the, in the sequence. As a result, it's the most prominent platform. In other words, if you drive on the, you know, down the length of uh, the Flint Hills, it's often you're driving on top of the Florence. That's the, this, each one of those limestones make a flat platform. And this is the most prominent flat platform within. The, and this is, uh, this is actually from um, Milford. Um, but this is the Florence too. But this is just to zoom up on it so you get a sense of what um, 
these are the flint nodules. Okay, the reason this is called the flint hills, right? Um, these are flint and chert. Flint and chert is the same thing. Flint uh, is a microcrystalline quartz. Uh, anyone know what quartz is? Silica. Silica. Silicon oxide. It's the same thing that makes glass. Okay, glass is just they just take silica sand, they melt it down, pour it out, freeze it. That's what makes window glass. So it's the same chemical composition as window glass. Um, so uh, a couple things about flint. Uh, first, it has all kinds of different names. Um, <laughs> uh, jasper is the same composition. Agates are the same composition. Mm -hmm. They're just all kinds of different colors. And uh, the flints we have here tend to be kind of white to gray to fairly dark gray in color. Uh, but the colors are from impurities, mineral impurities, and you get all kinds of colors. Um, but it's uh, silicon dioxide. Silica is one very resistant to chemical weathering, so it doesn't break down, and it's hard. Okay, so what happens is the main limestones and the upper part of the sea plants in the Flint Hills possess these flint nodules. Uh, Florence is the most flint rich unit. Um, and what happens is the limestone itself, calcium carbonate, um, will dissolve over time, even in an arid climate. It will slowly weather, more slowly than the mudstones, but it weathers. This does. So what happens is limestone slowly dissolves slowly weathers over time, what gets left behind? Flint. So it just accumulates. And so there are places uh, where you just almost have a flint rubble on the surface because the limestone's been dissolved away and you just have all this flint rubble left behind. Okay? Um, and also this is obviously was used to some extent by Native Americans. Uh, again, it's hard when you break, it breaks like glass. But when it breaks, it, it breaks with really sharp edges, I meaning you'll cut yourself on it. And it's very hard, so it's very good for tool making and, and other uses. One thing we can say about um, flint or shirt is that it's chemically formed. In other words, the limestone was there first. Uh, so at first, this was all limestone. It's a chemical process that occurs within the rock to replace the calcium carbonate or the limestone by the silica. Okay? So under certain chemical conditions within the rock, these essentially grow within the rock. And there are places where, again, there's some of these uh, here that where you can see that, um, that some of these flint nodules as the flint grows, it'll sometimes destroy the, the texture, the characteristics of the limestone it's replacing. So it just looks like a pure piece of flint. But in other cases, you can still see the fossils and things inside of it. So for example, I have one piece here of flint, and there's a nice uh, silicified fossil within it. Okay? So you can see that this is converting the original limestone into because we wouldn't have had fossils in the flint. The fossils were first in the limestone, and then the, the flint replaced the limestone and also the characteristics exactly. of the fossil. Exactly. Exactly. So, and actually sometimes they'll preferentially just replace the fossils, and I have an example of that too, where just the fossils themselves become silicified. Uh, it all has to do with water moving through the rock and how what the porosity is, where the water can move, where it can't move, and so forth. So that much we understand. We understand how the chemistry works. But we don't know where the silica comes from. This has been a big mystery, and no one's resolved it. So someone asked you, where does all the silica come from? We don't know. <laughs> uh, 